Welcome back to our video tutorial series where we are learning how to create Minecraft worlds using Python code. In this lesson I'm going to show you how to create a dance floor in your Minecraft world. So basically it's going to look like a little square like this and if you walk onto it it's going to start flashing different colors so you can have a bit of a boogie and then when you walk off it it'll stop flashing. Alright so jump on over to your Python editor. We're using Mu in this tutorial and I want you to add in the first two lines of code that we usually add in. So we're importing all the functions from the Minecraft module and that will allow us to basically build Minecraft worlds with code. And the second line of code there is just connecting Mu up with Minecraft so the two programs talk to one another. Now you'll notice that I've added in a third line of code here which is a little bit different. We're importing a module called time and that's basically going to allow us to use a timer in our code later on. So I won't explain it now but I will when we get to that stage in the code. So make sure you've added in this third line of code import time. And finally make sure you've also got your clear the world blocks. So we're used to the, putting those in. They will just empty the world off and give you a clean slate to work on. Once you've got that far, just hit save and make sure you save it as dance floor and give it a run just to make sure that your world actually does clear off. And if you look around, you should just see an empty canvas for you to build your dance floor on. Oops. All right, so getting started now on the proper code. First thing we're going to do is set the dimensions for our um, dance floor. So. I'll put in a comment first that says dance floor dimensions and you can choose how big you want this. I'm just going to set mine to five by five blocks. So I'm going to make two variables here called length and width and set them both to five. Uh, but by all means, go ahead and make that bigger if you would like. I wouldn't go any smaller, but if you want to go bigger, go for it, see what it looks like. Um, after you've got the dimensions, next thing I'm going to do is set the coordinates for the dance floor. So another comment going in saying set the dance floor coordinates and we want them all set to zero so we're building smack bang in the center of our world. So I'm going to write slightly different names for this. D floor X is going to be equal to zero. D floor Y is going to be equal to zero and D floor Z is going to be equal to zero as well. So D floor obviously stands for dance floor and then I've got X, Y, and Z. Still the X, Y, and Z values. I've just got a slightly different name for them. All going to be set to zero. So we're going to be building in the center of our world. And zero on the Y axis means we're building at ground level. So we're going to be building into the grass, basically. Uh, once we've got that set, we are ready to start coding up our dance floor. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to get the player's current position in the world. We want to know the coordinates of where our player is currently standing. So the way I'm going to do that is all on one line. I'm going to write x, y, z. This is why I didn't use these variable names up here because we're going to use them for the player's coordinates. So x, y, and z are going to be equal to mc.player.getPos with a capital P. Open and close some brackets. This function called getPos basically gets our position or our current coordinates in the Minecraft world and stores them in these three variables x, y, and z. So our x coordinate gets stored in the x variable, y coordinate in the y, and z coordinate gets stored in the z variable. Okay, I might put a comment after that just to help you out. So get the player's current coordinates. Would be a good comment to write there. And we basically want to be checking the entire time our program's running where our player is currently standing. Because if they're going to be standing on the grass, then the dance floor is just going to be turned off. Nothing's going to be happening. But if we're standing on the dance floor, then the lights are going to start flashing. Okay, and the way we tell the computer to always check our current position is we use a special type of loop. It's an endless loop. We're going to say while true with a capital T and then a colon. That goes just above the line you wrote. So while true is just another way of saying we're making an endless loop here and we're going to be repeating this line of code over and over and over until the person presses stop running or our game ends. Um, because it's part of a loop we need to indent it. So highlight that code you just wrote in and press, whoops, not backspace, you want to press tab 
just to push it across. By pushing that across, the computer knows that's the code we need to be repeating time and time again. Okay, so with that, we'll always know where the player is currently standing. Even as you move around the world, these variables X, Y, and Z will always update to your current position. Okay, the next thing we need to know is what block we're currently standing on. Because if, as I said before, because if we're standing on grass, then our dance floor is basically turned off. But if we're standing on the dance floor, then we want it to start um, flashing. So we're still indented here. We're going to make a new variable called block below. And what I want to do here is basically store the block ID of the block we're currently standing on. So remember block IDs come from this block ID list here. Block IDs are just the numbers that resemble, uh, represent one of the blocks that you can build with in Minecraft. So what we're going to write here is block below equals mc oops, dot get block. And this get block function here will basically get the block ID and if we add a little bit more code in, it's going to get the block ID of the block straight beneath our feet. And the way we do that is we look at our current X position, so where the player is currently standing on the X axis. Where they're standing on the Y axis, minus 1. So that means we're one block below where the player is currently standing. And the Z axis will stay exactly the same as where the player is currently standing. All right, so this little bit of code, get block, is looking straight beneath our feet. It's working out what block we're standing on and it's storing that block ID number into this variable here called block below. And I'll put a, a little comment in just to explain that. So you get the oops, block ID currently beneath us. All right, so I think that makes sense. Um, so what we're doing now because this is an endless loop, the computer is always going to know our current coordinates in the world, and it is always going to know what block we're standing on. That's what this second line of code does. So with that in mind, we can start to build our dance floor. So the first bit of code I'm going to put in is just to get the dance floor flashing, and then the final bit of code is to actually build the dance floor itself. So let's put in the code to make the dance floor whoops, flash or stop flashing. Okay, this code will do both. And this is some code we haven't used before in Minecraft. It's an if statement. Basically an if statement says if a certain condition is true then we're going to run a particular block of code but if this condition is false then we're going to run a different block of code. So let me show you what it looks like. It says if the block below, so remember this is this variable up here, so if the block below that is equal to 41. This is the block ID. And number 41, if we go and have a look at our block ID list, is the color gold. So if we just scroll down a bit here, we've got a gold block. So basically this line of code is saying, if the block below us is a gold block, then what do we want to do? Well, we want to change that to a different colored block. We're actually going to use a diamond block, number 57, as our second color in our dance floor. So if the block below us is equal to 41, we put a colon and press enter, and we just say we're going to change that block to number 57. So it goes from yellow to blue. Um, so if block below equals gold block, I'll put a comment in here and says, if we are standing on a gold block. What do we want it to do? So as I said here, we're going to change it to a blue block. So let's put in another comment. Change the block below us to a diamond block, which is basically a blue block. All right. But what if we're not standing on a gold block? What should we do? Well, if we're not standing on a gold block, then we must be standing on a diamond block. So that means we need to change it back to the yellow gold block. So we need to write on the next line the word else. And you can see that else lines up with the word if. It's no longer indented like this block was here. Okay, so just be aware of that. You've got to get your indents right with Python code. Otherwise, it'll have a few issues and a few errors pop up. 
So, as I said, if we are standing on the block 57, which is the diamond block, then we want to change back to block 41, which is the gold block. Okay, so we'll just say change back to the gold block. Alright, um, so that's going to get our flashing started or either stopped. Actually, it's not going to stop our flashing at all, so I'll just get rid of that bit. It's just going to keep the dance floor flashing. This will make our dance floor flashing. So while we're standing on our dance floor, it's always looking at if we're standing on number 41, the gold block. If we are, then it's going to switch to the blue block. If we're standing on the blue block, then it's going to switch back to the yellow block. And it's just going to keep going over and over because we're part of this endless loop until the end of our program. It's always changing between yellow and blue. All right. So that gets the flashing dance floor working. The last thing we need to do is actually draw the dance floor itself. So I'm going to put in one more comment here that says draw the dance floor. Not draw, it's more build. And the way we build the dance floor is just like we have done in the past when we're building stuff. We do mc.setBlocks. So mc.setBlocks. And we're going to go back up and use the dance floor coordinates that we have written in earlier on. So D floor x d floor y and d floor z are our starting coordinates for building the dance floor then we're going to go on the x-axis d floor x plus the width which we know is going to be five blocks it's going to zoom out a little bit here so you can see what's happening d floor y is going to stay the same because we're not going up or down we're going to stay at ground level and the final one is D floor Z plus the length. Okay, so remember the length is five. That gives us our five by five um, dance floor. Finally, what block are we going to be using to build the dance floor? We're going to be using the block. Okay, so we've set that value block to either 57 or 41. So either the diamond block or the gold block. I know it's a little bit confusing, but that's all you need to write to build the dance floor. The last line of code that we want to write in relates to the import time module at the top here. So remember I said that when we import time, we have access to using a timer. So what we're going to be doing here is as we're standing on our dance floor, instead of changing our colors continuously super, super fast, we're going to slow it down and write time.sleep and then put 0.5 in brackets. That basically stops our code from running for half a second, which is going to leave our dance floor the same color for half a second before looping back around and changing it to the next color. So every half a second, our dance floor is going to change colors. So let's give that a run and we'll see if that's going to work. All right, so if I look out here, we've got the dance floor built. At the moment, it's just one color, which is the gold color. If I go and stand on it, you can see it starts flushing. So the dance floor starts up as I stand on it. If I walk off it, you'll notice that it stops flushing. All right, so a couple of new little tricks there, especially the if statements that you haven't used before. And I don't think we've used the while true, which is an endless loop um, function before. Uh, even the get block function was a new one. So quite a bit to take in in this tutorial. Um, don't be surprised if it doesn't make a whole heap of sense. But if you just take your time to read carefully back through that code, hopefully you get a bit of an understanding on what's going on. All right, so that's all I'm going to show you in this tutorial. Um, I will see you in the next one.